Hi friends, it's Reverend Laurie Gisp with Unity of Ocala for our weekly love notes on this Wednesday, February 9th. Gosh, it's almost halfway through February already. Wow, I can't believe it. Well, this is an exciting month. We're coming up upon Lent. And I've had some of you who don't attend our church, but who watch us from out there, ask me about Lent. Some of my non-Christian friends asking me, particularly my Buddhist friends and my Jewish friends, asking me about Lent. And isn't that a Catholic thing? Um, and I say to them, well, it is predominantly Catholic, but also many of the Christian Protestant churches observe Lent. And they ask me, what does Lent mean to unity? And of course, unity takes this beautiful unitized spin on all of these beautiful traditions from all the world's faiths. And so we do observe a time of Lent, that time of journeying to the Last Supper, that journey of Jesus in the last few weeks of his ministry. And it is a very solemn, repentive time in the Catholic and Protestant traditions, not so much in unity, but this is also a lead up to Passover that my Jewish friends are very familiar with. So this time, this 40 days of journeying is a time that is not ununique to the human experience. We are just a volume of various chapters of journeys taken in our life, right? Our entire life is one big journey made up of millions of little journeys along the way. And being able to celebrate collectively um, a journey as big as the Passover or Lent leading up to Easter, it allows us more energy during these times. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the journey through Lent and to Easter and the journey to Passover and through Passover as these upcoming weeks come along. But I'd like for you, particularly you students that are going to be taking the class, Keep a True Lent with me on Wednesdays at Unity of Ocala. And if you are not able to make that class at 1230, 12, it's two hour class every Wednesday, starting the Wednesday before Ash Wednesday, which is February 24th. 12.30, about two hour class. And we will hold that class all the way up to the week of Easter. And I like to meet the week before so that we can start a time of preparation. And the reason that I like students to begin to prepare for Lent is, and, and for those of you, by the way, that cannot make it to the classes, I am going to be doing a mini version of those classes here during our love notes time together so that you can follow along with us during the Lent season if you so choose. Um, you can follow along in the book that was written by Charles Fillmore called Keep a True Lent. You can get all this information in the book on free, for free on the internet. Charles did not copyright any of his material. You can download all of his books, but you can also order it on Amazon or I think there's uh, used book sites. There's a lot of different book sites for very reasonable, but it's a wonderful resource because it talks about the Lenten season in a spiritual way, how to prepare yourself spiritually for this transformation of a resurrection, whatever it is you're resurrecting. I'm resurrecting a new chapter in my life. I'm creating this new version of me, the, the best vision of the, of the finest version I've ever had of me for this next chapter, whatever that is. But I'm going to go through the Lenten season deciding what I say I'm going to be, what God says I'm going to be, and what I don't want to be any longer. So I'm using Lent as a prelude to my chapter which I will write for myself. I'll share it with you. Sometimes I share too much. If my husband was still with me, he'd be saying, do you really need to share that much with your friends? Yes, I do, because we're all going through this together. But Keep a True Land has some beautiful explanations and understandings of the scriptures that we'll be reading along the way. It's got some lovely affirmations and quotes from Charles, some times of meditation, some questions, some quizzes. It's just a wonderful look at the whole season of Lamb. 
now preparation for a journey like this is important to me. I'm an artist. For those of you who know me, I paint. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn my computer this way. You can see back here. I'm starting on this huge, this is the biggest picture I've done yet, the biggest painting. It's going to be a, <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be yet. It's going to create itself as pictures always do. I mean, we are just the vessel that God pours through to become the final picture. But if you're an art connoisseur, if you like art, whether you paint or not, whether you draw or not, you just like art and you look at the pictures, I've got some great ones here in this room. Isn't that lovely? That's one of my favorite. Oh, I love that. That's a simple pencil sketch. No, I did not do it. I love it. One of my besties from ministerial school gave that to me. And I think of her every time I look at it. This was my husband's favorite room. This is where he spent most of his time in his last few months. And he wanted that picture right there for him. It's perfect going through the Lent season. I think I will record all the Lent messages in here. I've got my artist little lamp back there. And anyways, off the subject again. Other book. Oh, I was talking about my art. Well, when you go to an art show or a gallery or a museum, you see the finished product. And you think, wow, that person is so incredibly talented. And that may be, there's an artist in all of us. However, for those of you who have taken my classes, you know, you can paint. I don't care what you tell me, you will produce a picture and you will love it. Probably, most people do. There's a lot of preparation that goes into that work. For example, I'm doing this huge picture, which I have not done that size before. And I wanna use a, mono, a monochrome, background basically, but I want some things to pop. So I'm going to texturize it too. Now this takes a lot of planning. I have to plan the colors. I have to plan the shapes. I have to do a lot of work to the canvas. I'm even doing a small prototype study to just see, lots of people calling me today, to just see where this picture wants to go. I'm envisioning kind of what I'd like it to be, just like we do with our life and our journey. I'm envisioning this ancient Chinese village kind of built up on a hill, a fishing village. And it's either early in the morning or in the middle of the night, there's a full moon out. And there's a fisherman, maybe two, the old time ealers in ancient Asia, where they would have the little lanterns on their little boats and their oars, and they would go along and do their ealing. And then I want this cherry blossom tree to kind of come in from the outside and pop in, and I'm using lots of textures. There's a lot of planning and preparing going into this so that I get the finished product. Even though God's going to finish it, Spirit's going to guide me into what that picture really wants to be. It takes a lot of preparation on my part. And so with all these spiritual journeys that we take in unity, including the season of Lent, uh, the season of Advent, all of those lovely traditions that we celebrate, the more we prepare for it, the more we set a sacred intention for it, the richer the experience is going to be. And that is what Lent is about. That is um, a preparation for a brand new beginning of the celebration of you. And whatever it is that God is working out through you in your next experience, you can join in that great journey. And Lent is a beautiful time to do that. Now, traditionally in the Catholic and, and more perhaps um, Orthodox um, strands of Christianity, it is, a, like I said, a very solemn event. It's a very sad. It's a time of reflection, of repentance, of fasting, of kind of starving yourself, I guess, to remind yourself of your unworthiness, your unholiness, whatever. Well, unity doesn't go down that stream of thinking. Um, it is not in the Bible that we are miserable sinners. That came along and <laughs> yeah, well, that's another discussion, but that is not in the Bible. That was not a teaching of Jesus. We are not born sinners. Uh, Jesus did not come to remove our sin. He certainly has come to give us life and give it more fully, like he has said, and even these and even greater things than he shall we do too. And the kingdom of God is right here. And it was the father in us. We're not born of sin. That, that came about in the time of evangelical faith, the rising in the early 40s and 50s. So we celebrate the birth, the birth of something great in us. Christ came to give us life. 
one commandment he left, one commandment he left with his beloved disciples and his friends and his students and his peers, one commandment that you love one another as I have loved you, that you love one another as I have loved you, even your enemies shall you love. So that is our ultimate journey. Having said that, back to Lent as a time of fasting, I do take an opportunity to think about those things in my life that I want to fast from. Sometimes it's food. I like to use this time, this 40 days, as a cleansing, a full-on body cleanse. I do, it's going to sound strange, I do a vegan kosher fast. <laughs> no, I am not Jewish by birth. But I am sure I was a Jewish grandmother in another lifetime because I have been drawn to the teachings, the rituals, the wisdom. I do Shabbat every week. I, I don't bake challah bread as much as my daughter would like me to still. She would travel and come see me every day if I made it every day. But I do like the customs, the rich traditions of the Jewish faith, the prayers, the lighting of the candles, and especially the mystical branch of Kabbalah. I do observe all of that. And I take this time of Passover and of the celebration up to Easter to cleanse my body. Because we are threefold being, body, mind, and spirit. This physical entity, while it's temporal, it's not going to go with us to heaven or the eternity. It does need to be taken care of. It's a temple that houses the spirit of God. So I do a cleanse. So I try to clean out all the garbage. I, I try to get rid of the junk. And it is a time of fasting for those who do the traditional route. But I also like to fast of those things that don't serve me, those mental attributes, perhaps negative thinking, um, error thought, those things that we need no longer to carry with us. We fast from those. So this Lenten season is a time of preparation, of getting the body, mind, and spirit ready to receive. We're going to be looking at a couple of other texts that will come in handy, particularly for those of you who are just starting out in metaphysical interpretation of the Bible, which is simply what Jesus taught, the spiritual interpretation of the Torah was his whole body of teaching his whole legacy that he left us, the beautiful Torah, particularly the Torah, but also the book of Isaiah. You find a lot of his scriptures, particularly the, the parables, to be a breakdown of Isaiah and all of that rich terminology that he talked about in stories as a reflection of our own unfoldment spiritually. And this is a great text to read for that. It's by Ernest Wilson one of the early, early unity ministers, and it's called The Week That Changed the World, and it's about that Easter week. The last week by one of the Jesus Seminar Fellows, two of them, Marcus Borg and John Dominic Croissant. If you have not heard about the Jesus Seminar by now and you are a Christian, you may want to look at it very closely. The Jesus, Jesus Seminar is a established um, scholar group that has been it was formed around 40 or 50 years ago to come together as um, leaders from all the, all the Christian faiths around the globe to determine what Jesus actually said and what he didn't say, what was added to um, what was simply made up. And it's an extraordinary body of work. And the scholars that have worked on, on this, the hundreds and hundreds of scholars, these are two of, of the preeminent scholars. The last week details Jesus's last week into Jerusalem. And more importantly, what each of the steps of the journey were saying to us as he went, everything he did and said was so significant of his resurrection and what that means to us spiritually. So that's a great read. The last week, the week that changed the world, keep it true, Lent. This is my favorite. Well, I don't really have a favorite, but I could not do Lent without this. Peter Marshall's The First Easter. This is like a storybook version. Remember when you were a child in Sunday school and those great storybooks with the pictures? I love this. And you know, Peter Marshall was a Protestant minister or pre Presbyterian, I believe, Presbyterian. Anyways, he was the minister for the House and Senate um, and Congress for many, many years. And he was poetic. He was Scottish and he had that brogue and he just had this power with his sermons that, that wasn't fire and brimstone going to hell. No, it was beautiful. He would put those stories of Jesus into flowery words and would 
breathe life into those scriptures. And this is one of those sermons that, that his wife, Catherine, after he died, put into these beautiful, yeah, look, it's so, I have just marked it up so much that we're going to go through, we're going to go through that. And that very week of Easter, I'm going to read to you what he was telling his disciples on the last, at the last supper, get your tissues out. So this is a time of preparation. Be an artist of your life. Get yourself a journal. Get Keep a True Lent. Decide what it is you're ready to fast from, release, let go of. Is it negative thinking? Is it thoughts of lack? Look around your life. What would you like to see come to life in your life? How would you like this night, next chapter to be? Let go of that which is blocking you. Make a commitment of 40 days, beginning on Ash Wednesday, 40 days of deciding, I'm opening up to God. I open fully to that divine light and let the creative author of my life, the true captain of my soul, design for me this next chapter to be everything I could ever imagine it to be, to be the very best version of the best vision I've ever had about myself because God sees more. And I'm gonna get out of my own way and let God lift me to that place God wants me. Can you do that with me? Yay! Coming back to services on Sunday and we will be having class, a time of discussion after our services at 10 o'clock. And then at 11 o'clock, we meet for discussion where we will be talking about unity basics, all things unity. So I will see you on Sunday. Get your books. If you have questions about the course, send me a text. Um, simple. You can send me. You can send me an email, Laurie Gist at Gmail. You can call the church, Unity of Ocala. You can leave a note on our website. If you want to get all of our messages, videos, everything we toss out there, go on UnityOcala.org. Sign up. You'll get everything. Just remember. I love you. God loves you. It's going to be a fabulous, fabulous Passover and Lent. Take care.